finish up part two from last Sunday. How many of y'all enjoyed last Sunday? Come on. Amen. 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 That's awful low going on for Christ Church. Amen. Amen. We're going to let God be God. Uh, so excited. Don't pay me no mind. But every time God did something in the Old Testament, they built a memorial and worshiped God. <laughs> when God do it for you, you got to give him the glory. When God do it for you, you got to learn how to give God the glory. My God, never be ashamed as I teach y'all to testify about the goodness and the favor of the Lord that is on your personal life. Turn with me to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 20. I'm going to read this scripture. Familiar scripture starting at verse number 15. I may dance around a little bit after you be seated, but we're going to start at verse 15. My God, when you have it, say amen. Second Chronicles 20, verse 15, it says, He said, reading from the New Living, He said, I, Listen, all you people of Judah and Jerusalem, listen, King Jehoshaphat. This is a prophetic word going off of Christ's church, I guess. This is what the Lord says. First of all, He says, Do not be afraid. Oh my God, if you understand how much fear is robbing you of the next dimension and the next level. It says, do not be afraid. It's interesting, my God, uh, that the word of God will start off talking about, you know, if you're going to possess and move deep into the things of God, the first enemy you got to conquer is fear. Fear is a major taskmaster, my God. But he said, my God, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Because when you're in fear, discouragement soon follow. By this mighty army for the battle. It's not yours, but it's God's. That's a sailor right there. Quit fighting the wrong battles. Get out of the way and let God get in the way. Tomorrow, he says, now don't be scary, but tomorrow you're going to watch out against them. You ain't going to turn your back on nobody. You will find them coming up through the ascent of Zig at the end of the valley. Oh, my God, I prophesied that some of you are coming to the end of the valley last week. Uh, you've been in the valley, but you're coming to It's coming to an end. And my God said it's coming to an end. Oh my God, the, at the end of the valley, it opens into the wilderness. Wilderness means preparation and training. Sometime when God deliver you out of a valley, he's going to take you into the wilderness to prepare you for freedom. Ooh, my God, my God. Mm. Yeah, verse 17 says, but you will not even need to fight. Just take your position and then stand still and watch the Lord's victory. He is with you going off of Christ and guests. All people of Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid or discouraged. Go out against them tomorrow. My God, go out against them tomorrow for the Lord is with you. Verse 18, remain standing. Then King Jehoshaphat bowed. I think he got a word. I told y'all he bowed low with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem did the same and worshiped the Lord. Just remember people are watching you. Lead us. Leader is the title. Leadership is how you function and operate. So, my God, it says when Jehoshaphat, oh, Jehoshaphat, Jehoshaphat got the word, he bowed. And everybody that was connected to him bowed with him. So, Father God, we bow in your presence because we just received the same word that you gave Jehoshaphat. We thank you for the favor. We thank you for the goodness. Speak by your spirit. Encourage the body of Christ. Thank you for being faithful. Thank you that every one of your promises has been found true since April the 30th of 1995. I give you the glory, Father God, for my life, and I give you the glory for their life, Father God. As we come together, Lord, in the reading of your word, Father God, let your promises manifest even now in our presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank God for you. Again, uh, part one was on YouTube. Go in. I ask that you... Uh, Register to be one of our YouTube followers, and then when all the sermons is up, uh, you'll get a notice letting you know that they're up. I want to encourage you to go uh, look at the YouTube mm, of the sermon from last Sunday so you'll be able to follow me and get the full manifestation of this prophetic word that has been spoken into the atmosphere of going off for Christ Church. As the title says, take your position. As I told you last week, taking a position don't mean that you're standing upright. My God, there's many ways to take your position. Like, like I told you, James says, be quick to listen and slow to talk. See what I'm trying to say? So therefore, my God, God is asking us to make sure that we take our position and stand. 
Mm. The story is about a godly king, as I explained to you last week, Jehoshaphat of Judah, who pulled a nation out of a pagan worship, my God, and led them into worshiping the one and true God. Oh, my God, if you missed last Wednesday, please go on YouTube and look at last Wednesday. The title was, Who's on the Throne? Last Wednesday. Go look at it. Who's on the throne? Who's on the throne of your life right now as you sit here under the sound of my voice? There's only one true and living God. There ain't many gods. There's only one true and living God, my God. He and his people had just been victorious in battle against the Moabites. But now here is that even a more evil and powerful army is marching out against them. The king, Talmud Jehoshaphat, takes the people into a time of prayer and fasting. If the enemy is upon you going off of Christ church, then there's a time for you and I to go into prayer and fasting. It's not time for you, my God, to be all over social media. It's not time for you to be complaining. It's not time for you to bury your head in the sand. You got to go do two important things. You got to pray and you have to fast. There are some enemies that cannot be defeated unless you mix it with prayer and fasting. Listen to me, y'all. As a father, it's not enough just to pray about certain things going on in your life. Uh, you got to make sure that you're sensitive to what God is saying because God say, oh, may say, okay, you're praying, that's good, but now you need to make some fasting, consecrating with that, my God. Oh, my God, as I told y'all, there are certain enemies and certain situations that will not change, will not shift until you make some fasting and praying with it. Are you with me so far? Also, too, you got to add some praise. As I said, praise, praise. Praise is a weapon that confuses the enemy. Uh, pity the man or pity the woman that go to church every week but don't know want, don't want to praise God because they think that sissies praise God. The devil is a lie. A real going home for Christ men stand up and give God some glory in the house of the Lord. Who oh my God? I, I, I know I can get the women. I know I can get the women to understand. It. Ain't it's real attractive when you see men standing up and worshiping God? Do I got a witness out there? It's something attractive about a man that's worshiping God, especially when you know that it's pure and true. Mm, mm, mm. And so he took the people into prayer and praise, my God. And the spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, and he prophesied an encouraging word from the Lord. It happened just as God declared it. Oh, there's some words that's been spoken in your life if you just stay the course. As I told y'all doing a 21-day consecration, my God, you got to mix patience with prayer and faith. Come on, somebody. You got to mix patience with prayer and faith. My God, a lot of times we don't receive the promises, my God, because we get impatient. And then we start making moves and start creating Ismael's instead of waiting on the promise. Oh, my God, when you pray, now be patient. Oh, I'm giving y'all some principles. Please don't get caught slipping. Don't get distracted. When you pray, you got to have patience with your prayer to see it manifest. Man to manifest. Are you with me so far? And so, therefore, point number one from last Sunday was do not fear. I'm not going to mess with it. Go to the YouTube. And then I talked about don't be discouraged. That was point number two. Bring it up to number three, right, guy? You got to know the battle that's not yours. No, the battle is not yours. There are certain battles that I had to learn even as a pastor, my God. Some of these battles that has come upon my life, my God, it ain't yours. It's the enemy trying to divert my focus. I'm reading a great book that Pastor Dean blessed me with by the great Billy Graham. And I love the principles that I'm learning from the great Billy Graham. If he, was, he, he maintained laser focus to his mission. He was a soul winner. My God, he was an evangelist that won souls. My God, and that was his mission. Many things came into his life to try to divert him. Many things came into the great Billy Graham's life and tried to distract him and discourage him along the way. But because he had laser focus, my God, he knew, my God, what God called him to do. My God, he stayed true to his calling. Some of you, my God, has abandoned your calling because of fear and frustration. But if you know God has called you to something, it's going to take laser focus, my God, to see it manifest. And so, therefore, when you have laser focus, when fear try to come up, because we're human, we deal with an element of fear, my God. But when you're laser focused, you can overcome fear. As I told y'all, there's bad fear and good fear. Uh, you need some good faith to overcome some bad fear. Do I got a witness out there? Oh, well, my God, do you really got faith in what you believe in? Are you really standing in faith? My God, are you just talking about faith? Oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? Stay with me. Do you really got real faith? Oh, Minister Lenny teaches us faith ain't faith until it's tested faith. Oh, many people are shout, many people are praise, and many people are going to church until the enemy really start knocking. Oh, he ain't worried about you as long as you're a church goer, but when you become effective for the king and his kingdom, here he come. And it's going to take faith in this hour that we're living in to defeat the enemy. And saying all of that, though, my God, there's battles that you're going to have to say, God, give me wisdom, give me knowledge, and give me understanding. Give me wisdom, give me knowledge, and give me 
understanding, my God, concerning, my God, these battles that I'm in. You got to know what's yours and what's not yours. Come on, Derek. Come on, Derek. Move. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. My God, you got to give me wisdom and you got to give me knowledge to know, my God, what's yours and what's not yours. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We just pray. Y'all stay with me. Stay with me. I bind any, attack any, my God. I thank you, Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus. Come on, going on for Christ Church. Thank you, Lord. 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 We thank God for Sister Alicia, Lord. We thank you for her deliverance. We thank you for her healing. We thank you that every chain that's connected to her shall be destroyed and broken. She's a powerful weapon that the enemy is trying to keep in prison, and I release her in the name of Jesus. I, I thank you that she's coming out in the name of Jesus. Oh, my God, I give you the glory. I give you the glory. I give you the glory. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Sometimes God know how to wink at you and let you know you're in the river. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. So you got to know how outlook determines outcome, baby. Oh, my God, to my pastors, you get baby to stand. You can't let nothing smooth you. You got to be flat-footed in this thing that God has called you to be in, my God. But you got to understand what battle is yours. Ask yourself, have you been fighting the wrong battles? You're exhausted, you're tired, you're wore out, my God. And you got to ask yourself, have I been fighting the wrong battles? Am I fighting what God told me to get out the way so that he can get in the way? A am I trying to be God? Am I trying to take God's place? Why am I so woe out? Why come I'm not seeing, my God, the joy of the Lord operating my life at the level that I know it's supposed to be? I see pastor up there, he just all the time, he's free, he dancing, my God, he just all that, my God. Why come I can't be like that? Why come I ain't got no faith? Every time I come to church, I'm busted, I'm disgusted, I'm angry, I'm bitter. My God, the devil's all running up and down my life. Ask yourself, why? Why? Ask yourself those questions. Come on, y'all know I don't preach, my God, for emotionalism. I preach for deliverance. Come on, but ask yourself, my God, why is it that I feel defeated every single Sunday, every single Wednesday? My God, I can't get no joy. I can't seem to take off. I can't seem to soar. My God, I stay on the ground because I'm, I'm weighed down. Why? Why? Am I fighting the wrong battles? Am I carrying the long luggage? Do I got too much stuff in my suitcase that I need to unpack? Am I holding on to stuff that God said you by now you should have let go? My God, am I still locked in unforgiveness and locked in bitterness? My God, that's weighing me down. My God, you got to think about an airplane when it takes flight. My God, it got to be light. And when it begin to get up off the ground, it begin to soar. Oh, my God, and then you see the wings come out. My God, God is trying to get the church as well as you personally, my God, to begin to take flight so you can soar. Ain't you tired of running around the one way? Ain't you tired of being in the wilderness? Is you ready to take flight? Is anybody ready to take flight in the church? And so we got to make sure that we guard against fighting the wrong battles. That's why the Spirit of God says, let me slow down and be led by his Spirit. Right. You got to know, my God, what battles is yours and which battles is God. I promise you, I, even as the pastor, has made the mistake, my God, of getting in between God and what he's doing in somebody's life. Because when you have a pastor's heart like y'all know y'all pastor has, you don't want to see your sheep hurt. You don't want to see your sheep go through stuff. But there's certain things, Pastor James, that your sheep got to go through because it's training for the next, my God. If I get between you and what God is doing, that like bishop taught me, that's a dangerous place, my God, to get in between what God is doing in somebody's life. Sometimes, my God, like God, God did Jesus, you got to turn your back on your people and let them go through what they need to go through, my God, because it's molding them and shaping them for what they're going. Oh, you need some good battle. That's why the psalmist said it was good for me that I was afflicted. You need to go through some things, my God. But you got to know that the stuff that you're going through, my God, is not self-inflicted. That God will use it, my God, to advance his kingdom in your life. Oh, my God, I'm heavy. I ain't ready for me. And so you got to know what battle is yours. According to verse 17, my God, God continues to say, you will not need to fight this battle. Have God told you not to fight the battle? But because we're cloudy, because we're confused, because we're bitter, we're not underhearing what God is saying. He, if God told you that this battle that you're focusing on, you got your laser focus on the wrong thing, you focus more on what the enemy is doing and not focusing on what God is doing. Are you with me so far? I said we are focusing more on what the enemy is doing more than what God is saying and what God is trying to do in your life. Are you with me so far? This battle is not yours. I'm emphasizing this battle is not yours. My God, this battle cue is not yours. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, this battle is not yours. Oh, my God, my God. Mm. And further on in verse 17, he says, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for I am with you. God ain't forgot about you. I told you that, my God, in the book of Exodus, my God, the Bible says he, he, he heard, he seen their misery. When they was in Egypt, my God, being oppressed by Pharaoh, my God, the Bible says he heard and he seen their ministry, uh, their misery, and he came down to see about them. God ain't forgot about you. God know right where you at. And some of the pain and the pressure that you're in, it's all God. It ain't the devil. That's why God tell you to stand still. 
this battle's not yours. This is my doing. You think it's the devil because it's painful. Ain't nothing wrong with a little pain. You need some pain. You need some trials. You need some squeezing. I done taught y'all. You need to be squeezed a little bit. Uh, you need to get to a place where you don't understand. <laughs> or oh, you need God, my God, to launch you out there with a dream. My God, is bigger than the money that you got. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, the vision that God has for you is bigger than what you, can, you can't pay for, but God can. God will put you in a position where can't nobody get the glory but God. You're being stretched. It's good to be stretched. Oh, when you say you want to be holy and righteousness, get ready to be stretched. Oh, my God, when you say you want to be an effective tool in God's hand, get ready to go through some things because God is trying to mold you and shape you. But the good thing about the scripture to stay in context, my God, to act seminary because we have a few students here. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. God says, my God, that he is with you. Some of y'all need to really understand that. You think God has forgotten you. I know you've been going through some things. I know it seemed rough. I know your supervisor been on your neck, my God. I know your kids is acting crazy. I know the husband and the wife is tripping, my God. You're like, God, when? I've been going hard for a long time, God, when? Oh, uh, my God, but God said, I ain't forgot about you. I'm molding you. But are you staying in the wilderness longer than what you're supposed to because you're not learning the lessons that you're supposed to learn? Let me say it again. Are you staying in the wilderness longer than what you're supposed to because you're not learning the lessons you're supposed to learn? When God sent a trial, when God allowed a child to come, it's a purpose in it. Oh, my God, God is always teaching. He's always instructing. He's always guiding. That's why he said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. God will guide you right into the fire. God will guide you right into the storm. Get in the boat, Peter, y'all, and cross over. Then the storm came. God knew that storm was coming. My God, he used that storm to locate their faith, my God. Sometimes God got to send a storm to locate your faith. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Hey, so you're running from the thing that God is trying to use to train you. Oh my God, who am I talking to in the church? I said, God got to send a storm to locate your faith, baby. Yeah, yeah. He told Peter to get in the boat, then the storm arose. Yeah, they didn't catch God by surprise, but God is with you. God sees you and he's with you. God will fight for us. We can rest in him. There's a rest, my God, according to the book of Hebrews, my God, that you can enter in. Don't you know how many people never end into the full rest of God? Amen. They never make it to the full rest of God. That means you have let go of your will. That means you have let go of your control and you have given all to God. You're no longer an ankle deep. You're no longer knee deep and you're no longer waist deep, my God. You're all in, Ezekiel. My God, there's a rest that God is trying to bring you to. It took me a minute to get there, but I had to rest. <laughs> oh, my God, my mind been stretched. My God, the ministry has stretched me, my God. But I'm entering into a rest. I'm just not starting to settle down in that rest that I'm talking to you about. But you got to push so you can get to a rest. Is anybody tired in the building? It's okay. Raise your hand. Don't be feeling shame because you're tired. But God has a rest for you. He says, take my yoke. Come. But see, some of us, my God, we stay restless because we come to church, but we won't come. You came to church, but you didn't come to Christ. Many people come to church, but they don't never come to Christ. Come on, somebody, because you can't meet Christ and not stay the same. Oh, if you meet Christ, something got to change or something got to die in your life. You can't come to a holy God and walk up out here unholy. My God, I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. And so you got to stand. You got to stand because the battle is not yours. God used nine plagues. To free the Israelites, my God, he used frogs. If you remember, and you've been reading your one year, he used flies and nets, and he killed livestock. He sent festering boars. He used hell, locusts, and darkness. My God, he killed even the firstborn. My God, God will use whatever he needs to execute his will. Who, what, what God used flies? Every time we see a fly, we're trying to kill it, but a fly serves a purpose when it's in God's hand. Oh, my God. God used flies, my God, to make Pharaoh let my people go. Oh, let a fly hit our food, my God. We ready to throw the food away. Oh, my God. But God, in God's hand, <laughs> what you despise, my God, God can use, my God. What you think is insignificant in God's hand, my God, is significant, my God. God used flies. He used, bo he used locusts and all this stuff, my God, to execute his will and to do what? To show his glory. Everything that God does, he wants the glory out of it. So God will allow you to be dropped in the, in, in the midst of the fire. God will drop you in the lion's den because he already got the plan for you to be delivered. But he wants to get the glory out of it. So quit fighting against God and what God is trying to do. Oh, my God, I know it's tight. I know the squeeze, my God. But everything God does, he wants the glory. He wants the glory. You got to understand that the battle is not yours. Quit fighting fleshly battles. I teach y'all over here, you cannot win a spiritual warfare fighting by the flesh. 
flesh, birth flesh, spirit, birth spirit. The Bible says, put to death the deeds of the flesh by way of the spirit. Oh, you're trying to overcome stuff, my God, by the flesh. Oh, my God, you feel like if I quit doing it, it's going to go away. Now, some things you got to allow the spirit to kill in your life. If not, it's going to pop back up later on in the third, my God. You need a weapon to kill some of this stuff. You need a, uh, you need an axe, you need a hammer, you need a frog, you need a locust, my God. Oh, come on, somebody, kill some of this stuff that's in your life. But you got to put it to death by way of the spirit. What's lurking? What battle to keep popping up? You do good for two weeks and all of a sudden you fall to it. We know, we teach, we don't want to be public success and private failures. What's going on in private that if somebody really found out, um, uh, it's going to bring a level of shame. Uh, God wants that too. God said that battle right there ain't yours either. He said, I set before you life and death, blessing and curse. He said, choose life. All you got to do is make a choice. Some things that's on top of you and frustrating you, all to do is come down to a real yes, which means a real choice. Yeah. Just make a choice. Come on. I said before you, life and death. Quit choosing death and choose life. Amen. Are you with me so far? Yes. Just let it go. Somebody look at your name and say, let it go. Let it go. Come on, look at your name and say, let it go. My God, you're fighting battles that God wants you to let go. As I told y'all, when we crossed over into 2019, things that weren't supposed to come over into 2019 should have died in the Red Sea. Everything that was supposed to live made it through the other side of the Red Sea. Everything that was supposed to die drowned in the Red Sea. Have you brought stuff up over to the other side that was supposed to die in the Red Sea? Have you brought, my God, the mishaps, the mistakes, the failure, the shame, the guilt into 2019 and you should have let it die? You should have let it die in 2018. If you bought that stuff up and now the very stuff that you thought, my God, was gone, that you should have killed, uh, the thing that you fasted about for 21 days, you prayed about, it has showed up. Mm. What do you do when the enemy show up in your presence when you thought he had him killed in the past? You should, oh, I'm going so away. What do you do, my God, when the enemy show up in your presence when you thought you killed him in your past? Uh, you got to do what I'm going to teach you on point. The next point, <laughs> you got to bang. You don't run and hide, baby. You know, you got to stand up there, my God, and face your enemy. You don't run and hide. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. And so, my God, when you understand the battle is not yours, you got to do this next thing. You got to position yourself. Come on, let's position yourself. See, because position is very important in the kingdom. Uh, position, let me slow down and teach you now. Position is very important. God will, thank you, Holy Ghost. Pastor Madeline, God will strategically, listen to me, Pastor, y'all. God will strategically place Obashi come to our Christian, fivefold ministry in a ministry. Yes. Strategically yes. place yes. people in a ministry. I told y'all before, when you become a part of a local body, you're not just there to fill the chairs up. Yes. You got to say, God, what is my assignment? Right. You got to understand, some of you need to start understanding that I got an assignment. Every day God wake you up, you got to be intentional. My God, you got to be like, God, what is my purpose? What is my assignment? My God, how and why did you bring me to going off for Christ church? What is my purpose? What is my assignment? My God, because God will strategically place people in the ministry, my God, to enhance the ministry. That's why it's so important, my God, for you to find out what your purpose is to be connected to the ministry. If not, you're going to be frustrated. Because you're not doing what God told you to do. You fight every other battle. You fight the wrong battles, and that's why you're frustrated and tired. You ain't everybody else's business because you ain't carrying on God's business. See what God said? When you take your care of God's business, you ain't got time to be worried about all the next person. That don't mean you don't care. You just carried on a good work, Nehemiah. Why should I come down? My God, I'm carrying on a great work, baby. So you got to say, God, show me in this next shift, in this season, my God, what is my purpose for being connected to going on for Christ church? It ain't just for you to get free, because after God gets you free, you got to go help somebody else get free, baby. Somebody give God a hand right quick. You got to reproduce yourself. It's important to reproduce yourself to all of my just the beginning and even Martha's heart. My God, when God set you free, my God, from the programs and things that just beginning and Martha's heart doing is your job. You have a mandate. To go back and help other women get free. Yes. Every last one of you, my God, that comes this way by way of the prison ministry that we have at going over Christ Church, God has brought you out. You're doing good. Now you got to go back and help somebody else get out. Yes. Oh, that's the kingdom way right there. It ain't about your forward no more, baby. Come on. You got to carry on what God has told you to do. I promise you, when you carry on God's business, you ain't God going to take care of your business. You trying to, my God, take care of your business. God said, you take care of mine, and I'm going to take care of yours. Oh, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God, you got to allow God to take care of your business. For you. But you got to take care of God's business first, Brandon. Seek first the kingdom. And all of its rights and everything shall be added unto you. 
And so you got to position yourself. God will strategically position a person in the ministry to do business. God will set the body up, my God, to wage war against the enemy. God will position people, my God, and place people in the ministry to, to, to fight off the enemy, to fight off the wickedness. To fight. That's why you have intercessory prayer, my God. That's why you have different people that, my God, that serve in different capacities of the ministry. That's why it's called the body of Christ, my God. Every arm need the arm need the eye. The eye need the feet. The feet need the hand. The hand needs the stomach. The stomach needs the eyes, the ears, all that. Every part, my God, works in the body of Christ. You can't say you're not valuable. You can't say it don't matter. Let somebody else do it. When you don't show up, my God, we are wounded. When you don't be in your position, we lean in. When you decide that you want to stay home because you got a little bitty headache, but you could have came to church, you're causing the body to leave. You're leaving us open for attack, my God. You're leaving your brothers and sisters open to be wounded and attacked, my God, by the wolves because you are not in position. It's critical that you get in position and stay in position. What am I trying to say prophetically? My God, quit letting all this little petty chicken stuff move you out of position. Get your attitude right. You know why you can't soar? Because your attitude keeps you on the ground, my God. If you're going to soar, you got to have a right attitude that leads to altitude, my God. You let everything get you out of position. God placed you in the ministry. God placed you in that position. Why you quit? You got to be laser focused like Billy Graham. Millions of dollars came to him. Many opportunities came to the great Billy Graham. They wanted him to be an actor. Uh, they wanted him to start a school and all that type of stuff. He eventually did that. My God, but they said, we'll pay you $6 million just to get started. And then $3 million after the fifth year, he turned it down. And $6 million back in them times, 67, that was some cheese, baby. Yeah. He said, God called me to preach the gospel. He didn't call me to do no school. I can't even go back to say nothing like that. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, to some of my young ministers that's being brain, well, you got to read, my God, books, my God, that's going to stretch you, that's going to teach you things, my God. I thank God for the great man of God. Thank you for that book, son. Thank you. It was timely. Stay focused on your mission. Stay in position. What position have God put you in that you have given over and you have given up? What have you given over and given up on? That God said, I created you for that spot. Oh, my God. I created you for that spot. The late Dr. Miles Rowe, who y'all know we love. And my God, my God, my God, we thank God for him. God, you got a spot that God created for you. Who moved you out of your spot? Was it flesh? Was it an attitude? Was it looking at what somebody else should have been doing that they didn't do? And so now you got discouraged and you let somebody move you out of your spot that God created and brought you here for? Oh, my God. And it ain't just in the church. What about in your personal life? Some of us clip people too soon. You cut off the wrong people. And the people that you should have cut off, you ain't cut off. Because when you get ready to clip, when you get ready to push deeper into the kingdom, you got to go on a fast. Oh, I'm talking to myself as well. When you begin to select people that's going to be in this new squad, my God, you got to make sure you fast and pray and let God choose the 12. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Let God choose your Peter, James, and John. Let God choose your soulmate. Quit looking at him because he look good and he got 24-inch rims. My God, that don't mean he's supposed to be in your life, baby. Somebody give God a hand. So you could be positioned by laying prostrate, which is something we don't like to do. Prostrate. You could position yourself by being in a room and not talking. It's been many times back in my Greenwood days, my God, when Bishop would have the Kingdom Conference and the late Dr. Miles would fly in and all these high-profile pastors and everybody would come in. My God, I'd be over there just standing up against the wall, just listening, catching, getting fed. Quit trying to make yourself important. It's okay to be quiet and be a, a, a fly on the wall. And so I would sit there. My God, I would catch that. That's why I get that. Dr. Miles would sit at the table and wave the hand. Uh, bring me some tea and he'll wave his hand. That's kingdom right there. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, my God. And so therefore, it's just good to position yourself. Sometimes position yourself don't, mind, don't mean that you talk. The Bible says, draw nigh unto God and God will draw nigh unto you. Sometimes when you come in the presence of the Lord, let me teach you this, church. My God, I'd be so fool in the spirit. My God, we got to learn. We got to learn as people, I'm talking about in general, how to come in, in and out the presence of the Lord. Everybody don't know how to come in and out the presence of the Lord, Christian. Everybody, my God, will come to church, but they don't understand you coming in the presence of a holy God. And so everything, my God, is troubling you, everything that's on top of you, when you come in the presence of a consuming fire, when you come in, present, in the presence of the king, don't you know he got the keys, as I teach y'all, to unlock, to set you free, to deliver, or uh, whatever you need. So when you come into the presence of the Lord, you're coming to get a transfer. Yeah. Let me get this off of me and give it to God. He said, bring my yokes to him, and he's going to give me his yoke, which is peace. See what I'm trying to say? We got to know how to come in the presence, in and out the presence of the Lord. 
You just can't come in the presence of the Lord any kind of way. Uh, that's why it's good when you come and say, Lord, cleanse my soul, cleanse my mind. Forgive me for all of my sins. Forgive me for my negative thought. Forgive me for the cussing. Forgive me for the lying. Forgive me for the sleeping around. Whatever it is, your thing here, God cleanse me because I'm coming in the presence of a holy God. Don't you know that God would kill you in the Old Testament? You couldn't just come before God any type of way. The church has lost its reverence. We don't reverence God no more. That's why we pick and choose when we come to church and what we do, my God. But when you understand God's reverence and God's sovereignty, oh, my God, who am I talking to in the church? We got to learn how to come in the presence of the Lord. It's critical, my God. And when you come, sometimes God will say, lay out. Quit coming in the house of the Lord talking all the time. Come and sit still. God is speaking. When you get this many people together, God is speaking. You might get off to the side over there, my God, and get quiet. And let him tell your friend that you should talk to you. Not today, baby. I'm coming. I'm on assignment right now. I'm trying to hear God right now. I got too much noise going on. When you want to, when you want to hear God, you got you to defuse all the noise. You got to decrease so the spirit of God can increase in your life. Come on, somebody. See, there's many ways to position yourself, my God, for God to do battle in your life. Sometimes you got to come off the battlefield. A lot of us been doing good major battle for the king and the kingdom. And a lot of us got some wounds. Go into the barracks and get healed so you can go back and fight for the Lord again. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm trying to say, know when to fight and when to come off the battle. Know when to fight and when to get out to war. Are y'all with me so far? Amen. Oh, my God. Uh, position yourself. That means do not run and hide when the battle comes. But take your position on the front line of battle and prayer next to your battle buddies. Yeah. I showed y'all last week what that could look like. You got battle buddies. You got people, my God, that God will put back to back with you to help you fight. You see one way, and they'll see the other way. And when you turn, they got you that way. You covered all the way around. When you do a 360, baby, you covered all the way around, my God. But when you ain't got your back up against your brother or your sister, you left unprotected. Are y'all with me so far? Don't you know that prayer is a weapon as well? Praise is a weapon as well? There's many strategic weapons that God will use, my God, to fight battles for you. Come on, somebody. It ain't going to always come from the pool pit. You got to, as I taught y'all, you got to say, God, give me something strategic to fight this with. I just told y'all God would use a frog. God would use a locust. God would use a, as I've been teaching y'all, God would even use ants to train you. Because see, they ain't lazy. Ants ain't lazy. <laughs> what is God trying to use to teach you? What, who is God trying to use that's unconventional? Who, what thing? What person? Is God trying to use to train you for battle? How's God trying to position you and you fighting against God's will? How's God trying to move you into purpose? You're crying out for God for the, to, to do more in your life. You, you're saying, God, you want more. You, you're saying, God, I want to do more. I want to do this and that. But when God begins to push you and nudge you, my God, to move, because he's trying to move you into purpose. He's trying to move you into your spot. He's trying to move you into where he wants you to go. And all we do is fight and go back. We go back to the familiar. But we cry out and say, God, I want more. We cry out and say, God, I want to do what you called me to do. But so therefore, my God, uh, 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 when God's short trying to execute his will, you fight. Quit fighting against God's will and position yourself in God's kingdom. Say, God, here am I. I'm in your hands. Nevertheless. See, that's what it's going to take, woman of God. Thank you for agreeing. It's going to take a nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. In order to see the full manifestation, my God, of God's kingdom in your life, you're going to have to have a nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. Our wills get in the way. The will is a powerful, powerful tool that the enemy used to direct us. The Bible says the heart of a king, the mind of a king is in God's hand. Oh, my God, but you know God is trying to turn your mind, but your will is turning it back the other way. <laughs> God is trying to turn you, but you're trying to turn back. Yeah. You fight even against, thank you, Holy Ghost. Some of us is fighting right now against God. That's a battle you cannot win. Yeah. Yeah. You can't win when you fight against God. trying to turn you, and you're trying to turn back. Mm. Mm. My God, take your position. Stand shoulder to shoulder with each other. Lift your eyes. My God, I'm reminded of what the man of God says in, in, in Second Chronicles. My God, Jehoshaphat said, we do not know what to do, but we're looking to you for help. We're looking to you for help. Some of you don't know what to do. Look up. Set your mind on things above. Set your affection. Set your focus on things above. Look up. Don't look horizontal. Look vertical. Jehoshaphat said, my God, these people are coming against me. I don't know what to do. Here was the king. He said, I don't know. What to do. It's okay not to know. 
It's okay yeah, yeah. not to know. Yeah. God gonna put, I, I promise you what I'm getting ready, I, I don't know, but I know God knows. Oh, 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 oh my God, it's okay not to know. It's okay, Jenny, it's okay, Morgan. It's okay not to know, it's okay not to know, my God. But Jehoshaphat, out the king, dirty dad said, I'm gonna look to you, God. Who are you looking to for advice? Who are you looking to for strength? Who are you looking to for answer? It's critical that you know what you're looking to. Just because everything got Jesus connected to it don't mean it's Jesus, baby. Some of us run straight to people who ain't even thinking about Christ, and we get our advice from them. People in the church too messy. Yeah, they, they gossip too much. I don't want nobody to know my business. So we run straight to the flesh. Flesh only birth flesh, baby. Spirit birth spirit. Everybody in the church ain't no hypocrite. Matter of fact, when you and I showed up, there was another hypocrite. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Everybody got some level of hypocrisy, you know. Everybody got something inside of them, my God, that they need God to work on. We are a mess on our way to. I said we are a mess on our way to. Everybody got something that they need God to do in their life. Quit, 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 quit criticizing the people of God. Because when you showed up, there go another critic. They got a whole lot of mess that needs to be on their way. I said needs to be. Be careful people's always gossiping. Be careful people who's always criticizing. Y'all used to hearing this type of stuff everywhere. I'm not just talking about going, I'm talking about everywhere. Stay away from people that's always reaching out to you, you know what I'm saying, dumping on you. That's dangerous. That tells me that a person not flipping them pages. A person, that, that, that tells me that a person not praying and fasting. As I teach y'all, you can't pray for your enemies, Jesus said. You can't hate somebody you're praying for. Oh, my God. If your sister got a problem, pray for If your brother got a problem, pray for The second greatest commandment is to love thy neighbor as thyself. Quit talking about you and God, but you won't pray for your sister when you see she's struggling. How you see he's struggling. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You can't be talking about you going home for Christ, but then yet everybody you're talking to, my God, you put down a church, and yet you're talking about you got your going over Christ shirt on. And they see you talking about your church or talking about your sister. Oh, that's a bad witness. That's a bad witness. I'm going home for Christ, but I just didn't blaspheme God and the church. What type of witness is that? I think somebody's blood going to be on your hand. It's good. It's good. I'm still encouraging us. We don't preach, we build. We don't shout, we transform. It's about transformation. Ain't you tired? I got tired. I'm still tired. Ain't you tired? God's giving you prophetic word. Don't let fear, don't let discouragement. This battle is not yours, and now position yourself. God has given a strategic plan. God is a systematic God. If you follow God's system and you do a God ways, you're bound to get the results. God's promises are sure. They yea and amen. You cannot follow God's promises and then not get the results, baby. Or you cannot work God's plan, Barry, and not get the results, baby. Oh, I know it to be true in my own personal life. Uh, just stand. Take your position. Stand. Stay in position. Don't let nothing move you out of position. Position yourself. You know how you position yourself too? Right here. It ain't about your physical location. It's about your mindset. Dirty dies. It ain't about the physical. It's about the mindset. Because you could actually be here and your mind be somewhere and you be out of position. You know what I mean? People is out of position in the body of Christ. They everywhere in their mind. Where your mind at this afternoon? That means you're out of position. If you already at Chatters and Fish Daddies, you out of position. And see, that's just like, and see, let me, let me, let me, let me, see, that's just like what the scripture says. That's why you got to know what the Bible says. The Bible says that our bellies is a God, our appetites, our bellies. See, don't you know it's called king stomach? Come on, somebody. King stomach. Come on, come on, come on. Jesse Flanker says king stomach. Don't you know this stomach can make you do a whole lot of stuff? This stomach can make you get up and say, I'm home, I'm finna leave church. This stomach can tell you, my God, when you should have fasted, not to fast. My God, because see, when you get on your face, my God, when you start fasting, God gonna give you a key to unlock something. But your stomach gonna get in the way. Come on. Don't you know your stomach can be an enemy? <laughs> oh, my God. Some of you fighting. Mm, you need to fight your stomach. God's stomach. Come on, somebody. I said your God's stomach. You need to fight that right there. Because some of you ain't fasting. You ain't praying. My God, that's why you ain't getting nothing unlocked. Yeah. Keys to the kingdom. God said, I give you keys. Keys means authority. As I teach y'all, key means access. Oh, my God. But some of that got to come through fast. Don't let your belly become a God. Oh, my God. I know it, I'm a king and I eat steak from mahogany. I can't get nobody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, got, I know when to put it. I know when to shut it down, too, baby. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to know when to shut it down. Part of position yourself is know when to shut it. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. Part of your position yourself is knowing when to shut it down. When to come off the battlefield. When to get quiet. When to go into a consecration. You don't have to wait for a 21 day fast. You can fast anytime, God. Everybody should be fasting. Mm -hmm. When your flesh is loud, my God, and still you can't hear God and you're cloudy and you're confused, my God, put yourself on a consecration. But we don't want to do that because King Belly wants to be fed. I lost a lot of mine, but it's okay. I'm trying not to gang it back. I, but we got to watch the King Belly. That's Bible. Read your Bible. Your belly, your appetite can be a God, man. Make sure your appetite blesses the man who hunger and thirsts after righteousness. See, that's a good appetite. Hunger. And thirst after righteousness, hunger and thirst after the things of God, hunger and thirst after Matthew 6 33, hunger and thirst after Matthew 28 19, hunger, my God, to see somebody come up out of mess, my God, and be transformed into God's kingdom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's go a little deeper. I ain't got that much to mess with you. Come on, my God. But the Jehos Jehoshaphat said, I lift my eyes unto you. Pour the position yourself. You got to plant your feet, baby, and you got to stand. Plant and stand. Plant and stand. Plant and stand. Stand. See, some of you see, man, he sure is powerful. Why don't you walk like a king and a queen that you are? Stand. You plant it, but you. You plant it, but you. Plant and stand. Stand up. Even if you got fear and discouragement, you still stand. You making a statement to the enemy that, my God, I'm dealing with some stuff, but I'm standing right here. And I will not be moved. Stand. Stay planted. Anything that's not planted won't grow, y'all. You know another reason why we're not seeing the enemies fall in our lives? You know why fear keep defeating us? Because we're in church, but we're not planted. We're in church, but we're not planted. We tend church, but we ain't planted in the kingdom. As I teach y'all, don't come to church, come to Christ. Get planted in Christ. Church don't change you, Christ changes you. Many people come, my God, because pressure in life, my God, would draw you to the church. They're like, I got to go back to church, I got to go back to church. Don't do that. As y'all know, I teach y'all, I tell them, no, don't come to church, come to Christ. When you come into the house of the Lord, come with the expectation to meet Christ. The church is just a building of people coming together that's a mess on their way to progress. When you come to going over Christ, you tell them you're coming to meet Christ. You ain't coming for the pastor. You ain't coming for your sister, your brothers, or your wife, or your husband. You're coming to meet Christ because you need Christ to change your life. Get out the way and let Christ transform your life. Part of positioning yourself is making sure that you posture yourself in the house of the Lord. Make sure that you come prepared with your journal. Make sure you come prepared with your pen. Make sure you come prepared with your iPhone, iPad, or, or Bible. My God, you are positioning yourself in the natural, my God, to receive orders from the king. See, we got to get out this church mentality and get into a kingdom mentality. I ain't interested in church. I'm interested in kingdom, 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 kingdom. My God, position yourself in the natural. Come expect it. I'm getting ready to sit with the king. He got something he need to tell me. He got something I need to know. I'm posturing myself, Minister Hunters. I'm, I'm positioning myself. I got all my tools. I ain't distracted. Uh, some of you need to learn how to turn your phones off because your phone is distracted while you're on, sitting in church all on Facebook. You're out of order. Yeah, yeah, you're out of order. God sees that. He sees that. He sits high. You're out of order. If you got your phone and you're on Facebook and you're emailing all that, you're out of order. Your business ain't more important than the king's business. Your business ain't more important than God's business. What makes you think that your business is more important than God's business? God can close your business right now while you're sitting in the church. He can send a, a tsunami through there and wipe your whole business out while you're worrying about your business. But you ain't worrying about God's business. Ain't nothing more important when you come in the presence of the king. I'm giving y'all kingdom. I'm not giving y'all church. Quit coming in the presence of the king. My God, distracted. I'm here to meet the king, baby. Speak to me, king. Talk to me, king. I need you right now, king. Speak to me. My God. That's part of positioning yourself, my God. Understanding that you're coming in the presence of a king. You're coming prepared. Mentally, physically. Posture yourself. Bring your flesh under submission to your spirit. Because the king is ready to speak. Oh, my God, everybody didn't get an audience in the Old Testament with the king. When the king summons you to his presence, that was an honor. My God, people didn't jump and shout, I get to go see the king. You come to the presence, off with your head. You got to understand that type of stuff. Thank God for Calvary. Because a lot of stuff that God, my God, tolerate now, he didn't tolerate in the Old Testament. He killed you for. Quit taking it for granted. 
Point of position yourself is learn how to sit in the presence of a king. That's Bible. That's real kingdom instruction. That's not emotionalism. That's not pop culture church. This is kingdom business. I'm trying to position yourself. Point of position yourself is learn how to receive from the king. God got keys for you. He got dreams and things for you. He got vision for you. He got your next. He is ready to answer your prayer. He already answered it. But he can't let it manifest because you're out of order. You ain't in position to hear it. God speaks every time you come together. You can have this many people come together and God not speak. But you're distracted. Out of position. Out of position. Plant your feet and stand. Okay, now after you position yourself, do the next thing. Remain in position. Remain in position. Remain. Don't let nothing move you, Ariel. Don't let nothing move you. Don't let nothing move you. Don't let nothing move you. Amen. Don't give in to, to, to pleasure. Don't become seeker friendly. Don't dumb down the kingdom. Don't dumb down the constitution because you're trying to fit in with everybody. It's still 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived. Don't be tricked. Don't be misled. Don't get caught slipping. Evil company corrupts. You still got to watch the people, places, and things that you're around. So I tell you, son, William, I got to protect your anointing. So I tell you, son, protect your anointing. I know you go to OR, you protect your anointing. Eh? Yes, yes. Protect your anointing. I mean, everybody, my God, you're talking about Jesus and Jesus. On, protect your anointing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Discernment. Discernment. Yes, God is telling us that telling us that how we position ourselves and where we position ourselves is extremely important. How and where. Write that down. How and where. Amen. How and where. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give God a hand for me. Come on. How. We position ourselves and where we position ourselves is extremely important to the outcome of the battle. Somebody, please, don't miss that. How and where you position yourself is extremely important to the outcome of the battle. You could be fighting good battle and be out of position. And you're not seeing the manifestation of the victory because you're out of position. That's why you got to find your spot. And when you get to your spot, Everything just feels right. It just flows right. That's why once you get your spot, once you know your mission, once you know your purpose, you can't let nothing move you out of purpose. You can't let nothing move you out of position, church. You got to remain. Why do you think that God said in the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, is it, yeah, 15, 1 through 5, he, he said, I'm the vine. Write that down. I'm John 15, 1, I'm the vine and you are the branch. He said, every branch that remain in me shall produce fruit. Every branch that disconnect, Minister Hunter, my God, will surely die. Oh, my God, here I come in the spirit, y'all. Jesus said, remain in the vine. Stay connected. My God, when you look at remain, my God, means take your place. Settle down in God. Some of us, my God, been around the church and we still haven't settled down in God. Oh, we still ain't sure that the Genesis through Revelation work. We, we still ain't quite sure, even though we've been around uh, and going to church. and We ain't really not sure that all this that took place on Calvary is what everybody said is. There's so many other religions. How do we know that Christianity is the way? Huh? People speaking in tongues, you know, in the fire for it. How do we know? See, you're unsettled. Um, you got to allow God to settle you, my God. And once God settles you, then you got to allow God to connect with you, my God. And once you get connected, you got to latch on like I did 23 years ago. I ain't never let God go. Sometimes you got to hold on to the horns of the altar, my God. Uh, you got to be like Jacob. Say, I'm not going to let you go, God, till you bless me, my God. Some of you ain't desperate enough, my God. Oh, my God, you got to remain. You let everything get you out of position. You let fear, you let discouragement, you let have people don't speak to you. Somebody don't do this, just get you out of position. Uh, your supervisor was tripping with you on the job. You're like, I ain't coming to 6 o'clock prayer on Wednesday. Uh, and you done worked all week, my God. You done fought, oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. You done worked all week and fought all the wrong battles. Now you tell yourself, I ain't going to church today. I'm tired because you've been fighting all the wrong battles and you're taking it out on God. And my God, because you're all out of position, my God. If you remain in God, God will show you what battles to fight. If you remain in God, the Spirit of God will lead you. My God, and guide you into all truth. My God, to use fire by night and a cloud by day to guide the people. Who am I talking to? Some of you need a cloud to lead you. Some of you need a God to use fire to guide you in the midnight hour. My God, but you got to remain. 
connected to the source. God is the source. Anything that disconnects from the source, dirty dies, will die. Anything. It's just a matter of time. Some death is, is, is instantly, and other is slow process. Everything that's jumping and shouting don't mean that it's alive. Everything that's lifting their hands in chapel don't mean that it's alive. Everything that's talking Christ uh, don't mean that it's alive. Everything that's dressed up Christ don't mean that it's alive. Oh my God, you would know if they're alive if they remain in the midst of a storm, in the midst of a trial. When they don't understand, my God, they're still showing up in the midst of hell. They do like the woman with the issue of blood. They'll get out on the ground and crawl. They'll get out on the ground and crawl, my God. How desperate are you, my God, to remain with God? Are you willing to do whatever it takes, my God, to remain in God? Are you willing, my God, to pay a price, my God, for your business to be birthed? Are you willing to pay a price, my God, for that situation to be turned around? Are you willing to pay a price to see your husband sitting beside you instead of you coming to church by yourself all the time? What price are you willing to pay? But you got to remain. That's why the Bible says, my God, keep on pushing. Don't faint. In due season, you're going to reap. Too many people, my God, are shipwrecking. Everywhere. Everywhere, mother. People are leaving Christianity by the thousands. Bishop told me the other day. About a thousands, they're being entertained. They're being disconnected. They're sick and tired of pastors and preachers playing games. These young folks is hungry for truth. They want the real fire. I thank God for the young man of God. My God, are you voices? Come on, give my hand one more time. They're looking for something real, baby. So you got to remain. It's critical to see the victory that you remain. Remain, Sola. Remain. Yes, Keep showing up. Yes. Keep swinging your sword. Yes. Remain. Yes. Stay connected. Stay grounded. Stay rooted. Take your position. Tell God to get back to back with you. I told y'all that last Sunday. Oh my God, let God put his back up against your back. He got you. Yes. Every weapon that's formed in the Bible says it will not possible, but you got to remain in position. Yes. Yes. Oh, you got to stay in the right. Oh my God, part of remain is not just physical position, but it's about having the right heart. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes. Right attitude. Yes. Real agape love. Oh, don't you know you could be in position and steal your heart is so bitter. T.D. Jakes say some of the hard-hearted people go to church every Sunday. Where their heart is like a nasty, burnt black cat. That's what Jake said. Think about a black cat, burnt black cat. That's how our heart look on the inside. Jesus said clean up the inside, then the outside shall be clean. We too bitter. That can't go. Don't you know bitterness will drive you out of position? Fear and discouragement will drive you out of position? My God, fear and discouragement will make you get ahead of God? Impatience to make you make moves that you should have never made. Being impatient to make you disconnect when you should have stayed planted. Flesh to make you marry somebody you shouldn't marry. When, when, when you don't want to hurt, my God. Oh my God, who, 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 I'm sorry. I don't, yeah, but, you, but you don't want to hurt no sound truth, my God, so you stay away from the pastor because you know what? I'm going to keep it on a dollar. See what I'm trying to say? So you'll go marry, but you're married in the flesh. And then I got to come back and build you back up. My God, I did not hurt you and wound you. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. It's the Bible, baby. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Flesh, discouragement will make you marry somebody that you should marry. Flesh will make you say yes to something you should have said no to. Flesh will get you out of position. That's why the Bible says put to death. Man, this flesh is a cold thing, baby. This ain't no game up in here, man. This is real serious warfare up off in here, man of God. Flesh will make you get ahead of God. Flesh will make you mess up your whole life. Flesh will make you, my God. Flesh will cause you to go broke, man, and lose your mind and commit suicide. Flesh is a cold battle, baby. Protect the anointing. Protect the anointing. Look at your neighbor and say, protect the anointing. Hmm. Yes, Lord. How you position and where you position will determine the outcome. If you leave the fight or leave your position, you make the rest of the soldiers vulnerable. And you won't see the victory. Let me put a little scripture on this so you won't see the victory. When you leave your position, when you step up out of God's will ahead of time because you let fear and frustration and discouragement and you let people get on your nerves. Well, how about getting on your own nerves? Because you ought to be tired of your own self. When, 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 when are you and I, I and you, because y'all know I don't preach down at you, when is I and you, you and I, going to get mad at your own self about all the mistakes and all the sin and all of the gossip? Yeah. All, when are you going to get tired of your own self? I think Jay's called it the enemy in me. It's everybody else's fault. When is it going to become your fault? Mm -hmm. 
Let me give you a little scripture, my God, to remain in position. Now watch this. I'm looking to watch this. Exodus 14, 10. Write this down. Exodus 14, verses 10 through 14. It says, as Pharaoh approached, the people of Israel looked up and they panicked. Oh, my God. As the enemy approached from the back, he's chasing out there. The enemy is chasing you down. The enemy is chasing us down. The enemy is chasing us down. Mm. And the Bible says that they looked up and they panicked. And when they saw the Egyptians overtaking them, they cried out to the Lord. And they said to Moses, watch the people. Yeah, we say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Moses, thank you. Here it is. God used nine different enemies to destroy Pharaoh. Now they faced with some opposition. And look what they say to their leader, Lawanya. They watch the man of God. God do miracles. God never used another man at the level he used Moses, Stacy. They seen God move. They seen the Red Sea parted. They seen God completely destroy Egypt. Now God has brought them out, and the enemy is chasing. Just because you've been brought out don't mean the enemy going to stop chasing you. It's one thing to get free. As I teach y'all, you got to remain free. You know how you remain free? That means you stay connected. You stay in position. Oh, my God. Somebody. Uh, many people get free, but they can't keep their freedom. They give it back to the enemy because of fear and discouragement. And a lot of it be our own fault, but you blame it on her. They panicked. When they saw the Egyptians overtake, they cried out to the Lord, and they said, why, they said to Moses, why did you bring us out here to die? In the wilderness, weren't there enough graves? Look at the mindset of the people of God. This is the people of God. Is this your mindset? Oh, I'm trying to help you before I release you. They said, why, Moses? Did you bring us out here to die? Weren't there enough graves? In Egypt, Egypt in the Bible means captivity. You brought us out here, we could have died in slavery. We could have died in captivity. We could have died being told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Uh, we could have died, my God, by letting another man control us. Uh, you brought us out here. You should have just left me locked up. You should have let me, my God, take a shower when Pharaoh tell me I could take a shower. See, see, that's a prison mentality for some of you that don't know about that. I'm okay with you feed me three meals a day and feed me what you want to feed me. Some of us is okay with, with, with being blessed a little bit. Some of us are okay with being able to uh, pay our bills but, but roll over the other credit. Come on, somebody, to another credit card. Some of you are okay with a slave mentality. Uh, they said it was enough graves, enough graves, make, uh, but you brought us out here to die and eat. What have you done to us? Boy, how fickle people is. They forgot about the nine plagues of the youth. They forgot about the Red Sea. They forgot about how God led them by fire and night in the cloud by day. How soon we forget, even what the pastor's done for you. Oh, I'm trying to finish this. It, it, it says, didn't we tell you this would happen while we were still in Egypt? We said, leave us alone. Let us be slaves to the Egyptians. God died. I'm trying to bring it in. God died so that you and I don't have to be slaves to the elements of the world no more. Uh, we don't have to be slaves to secret sin and porn. Uh, I know all that old type of anger, bitterness, fear. We, we shouldn't be a slave. Our flesh should not be dominating us. Our flesh should, be not, should, should not be governing us. Uh, God gave us dominion over that stuff, my God. Uh, but the people mindset. Even though they was free from captivity, they still had a bondage mindset. Don't you know you could be free like we are in America? The American people is the most boundless of people in the world. We live in a land of free, but we bound to everything. Oh, Lord. It's better to be slaves in Egypt than a course in the wilderness. But Moses told the people, don't be afraid. Just stand still. Just stand still. See, Moses had to deal with the fear first, daughter. Fear. He said, until God deal with your fear, you're not going to remain. To God deal with your fear, you're going to get ahead of God. Fear will cause you not to hear God clear. See, God got to deal with the fear. That's many of us fearful. We fearful of our necks. We fearful of the unknown. Can I be honest? I'm fearful to a degree. 
but I'm not paralyzed. One thing to be fearful or respectful for, but to be paralyzed is something else. Yeah. But I'm fearful, but I get to watch God do it. Yeah. My, ex- my expectation is what pushes me forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so high, because he told me eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it. I'm waiting for him to do it so that he can get the glory out of it. My God, let me bring this thing to a close. Y'all ready to go to chat us? My God. He said, deal with the fur and stand still. Please, y'all, listen to me. Fur will move you out of position. I'm redundant. Don't let nothing move you out of position. Billy Graham didn't let $10 million move him out of his calling. Moses chose, my God, to shun all of the pleasure to do what God called him to do. Moses said, all that you afford me, all the pleasure, all the the delicacies, all of the stuff that go, he said, I shun that stuff to do God's will. See, that's a real eternal yes. See, that's a real, boy, my clothes, I done lost some, my God, give God, oh my God, but don't die in slavery. When God bought you to go on off of Christ to get free, don't sit up here and die in slavery. Don't die in Egypt in your mind. Don't die on the vine. Oh, my God. Mm. The Egyptians you see today, Moses said, you'll never see again. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. Just stay calm. Woo, shaka ba shanda. Just stay calm. Stay connected. Stay in position. Got everything worked out. Everything, Patrice. Everything, mother. Let him make the decision. Don't fight it. Stay connected. Stay connected. Stay connected. Remain. Just rest. Amen. Say, God, okay, I got some fear of the unknown. I, I, I don't know if I'm qualified, and that's good. That's what God wants you at. Because I'm definitely not qualified. Y'all know my background. Uh, they tried to talk me out of it, but God said, I'm going to talk you into it. Yeah. 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 They said you weren't going to do it, and I'm going to follow you. You preach too real. You preach too hard. Uh, but I ain't got no problem with it. It's all good. Yeah. Remain. Some of us has allowed ourselves to get out of position because of fear, discouragement. Did you know frustration is a part of discouragement? It's a trick of the enemy. The enemy, Tracy, wants you to get discouraged so you can tap out. His ultimate goal is death. But he also knows that if I can get some people to disconnect and not remain because of fear and discouragement and being out of position, that it's a matter of time before they die. Are you dying slowly? Is coming to church a struggle? Is reading your Bible a struggle? You don't get no joy out of reading no more. You don't get no pleasure out of coming to prayer or even praying at home. There, there, there is no excitement about, my God, I get to go sit down with a bunch of sisters on a Monday night and we get to talk and laugh and cry like y'all do. There ain't no joy in that. See, see, your appetite has shifted. The things of God is not tasteful. To a person that's dying. Y'all better listen to me, man. If it's not tasteful to you no more, you're dying. If you can justify about not being in covered and submitted to this house, my God, you're dying. And you can justify and say, well, I'm going to go somewhere. That's fine, too. That's fine, too, because those who are supposed to be with us will be here. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Dog? I ain't worried about none of that. I promise you. I promise you. I'm not. My God, are you dying? Are you dying? Are you remaining? Take your position and stand. Take your position and stand. Take your position and stand. I'm prophesying. What position do you need to take? Don't be so easily moved, Sandra. Don't let nothing interfere with your assignment. You got to pay a price to remain. You got to pay a price to stay in the spot, dirty guys. Oh, my God, it's going to cost you everything, my God, and her job well done, my good and faithful servant. It's going to cost you friends. 
It's going to cost you pleasure. Everybody want to go out and kick it. I got to stay home and fast and pray to get a word. See, it's going to cost you something to her job. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Mm. But you got to remain. You cannot fight discouragement and fear if you're not remaining. In God. I ain't talking about it going off of Christ church. I'm talking about in God. If you remain in God, I ain't worried about you being in the church. Many that you don't see because they ain't remained. They can justify and go sit, but they ain't remaining. Slow death is enemy to anybody. As well as quick death is enemy to anybody that's not connected to the vine. All you got to do is read the Bible. The Spirit of God took the liberty that it needed because the Spirit of God is posturing you for your next. There's things you're needing God to do that only God can do. But you're going to have to be properly connected. 